Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining our virtual Hacking a Career during wor uh, workshop series. I would like to thank our sponsors who have made this Hacking a Career workshop series possible. Thank you to Best Buy Foundation and Comcast NBC Universal Telemundo. And I'd be remiss if I didn't thank our official airline partner, Southwest Airlines, who will be leading today's session. Before we get started, I would like to go over a couple housekeeping rules to keep the workshop as smooth as possible. We will be having a Q&A session at the end of the workshop, so please make sure to submit your questions in the Q&A window found at the bottom of the Zoom bar, and feel free to share any comments under the chat icon and make sure it's set for both panelists and attendees. That way everyone can join um, and see the conversation. Now let's get started. Today's session is the second of a three-part series Yesterday, we kicked off with a series uh, focused on personal branding, and today we will focus on resume and interview prep, and we will conclude tomorrow with a virtual job board where we will have several Fortune 500 companies joining us and sharing current career opportunities available at their companies, so you do not want to miss out. Make sure uh, we, you join us through the RSVP link to receive that link and uh, so you can join us tomorrow. We have put together a great lineup of speakers that will offer insight and tips on how to navigate today's workforce. Now more than ever, we need to work together as a community and help one another. If you know of anyone that can benefit from this insight, please share it with them and feel free to invite them to um, any of your friends and family members. So now let's get started. Kicking us off, we have Sarah Steinman, a People Department Program Lead, K through 12 at Southwest Airlines, and Noel Perez, Senior Sourcing Recruiter at Southwest Airlines. Thank you for joining us and please take it away. Okay, so hi everybody. Um, so thank you again to the Hispanic Heritage Foundation for inviting us. So uh, we're very honored. So uh, we're gonna be uh, talking a bit about resumes, interviewing and uh, some LinkedIn uh, tips and tricks. Uh, so we're gonna go over the agenda first. Perfect. Hi, everyone. We're so glad to be here and just excited to get to chat with you about all things interviews, resume review, and LinkedIn. So we'll get started. Uh, Noelle will kick it off talking about just interview tips and tricks in general. Then I'll dive in a little bit into what does it look like to interview virtually. Um, and then we'll transition to talking about resume review. Um, and then Noelle is an expert LinkedIn sourcer. And so he'll be talking about LinkedIn. Um, at the end of our time, we'll have some time blocked for Q&A. So any questions that you have, we want to hear them and hopefully we'll have time to answer all of them. Um, so I know there's the chat option and the Q&A option. So make sure you submit your Q&A into the Q&A uh, portion of Zoom and then your chat into the chat portion. Um, we'd love to hear from you and we might have some interactive opportunities throughout our time um, as well. So we're super grateful to and with that, we are going to get started and go to the next slide. All right, so uh, let's get right into the chat function, like Sarah said. Um, so we're going to chat through some of these as we go, but if we can ask the audience to share an interview question that always stumps you, perhaps, uh, we understand that there uh, may be ones that you're just curious about uh, or want to know how would we answer, right? Uh, but we're going to begin with a couple that uh, I know uh, myself and Sarah have seen from time to time. Um, so uh, let's go with the one that says, tell us about a time when you had a conflict with the coworker and how did you resolve it? Um, so here's what the recruiter perspective. We love the person that is honest. Um, and we uh, also noted when the person says, no, I'm perfect. I've never had any conflicts, right? Uh, what we're looking for here is conflict resolution skills. Uh, and also how we deal with stress. Uh, we know that there can be stressful times or there'd be a deadline with a project that needs to be done. And we're also looking for how are some skills that you can bring some soft skills to that table uh, in your role, right? But uh, these are some uh, some things that uh, to be conscious about whenever you get a question asked in that same way or, or form. And I know Sarah had one too that she uh, can bring up. Yeah, a question that I always think is tricky is a, is the question, what is your greatest weakness? I always feel like that is hard. How do you talk about something that you're really, really bad at? Um, so my recommendation for this question is to think of an example that you can give of something that you're weak in, but also that you're working to address. So recruiters and hiring managers are really wanting to 
see how self-aware you are and see what steps you're taking to overcome a weakness that you might have. So if I were to say, you know what, a weakness I have is public speaking. It makes me really nervous to speak, but I am doing X, Y, Z to improve my public speaking skills. That's how I would recommend um, answering that question. And it looks like a couple of people already asked that, Sarah. So uh, we, we predicted that one. Uh, but we're going to answer a couple here. Um, you know, of course, we're going to have a Q&A part at the end. If you wanted some that maybe we couldn't address, feel free to Yeah, but uh, the, uh, in the vein of going from first one in, tell me about yourself. So I see that that one has been asked. And, um, you know, tell me about yourself. It's something that uh, maybe it's, it's broad and could come off as like, well, what do I say, right? As a recruiter, I know personally, I like it somebody. I like somebody that is genuine about their interest, uh, not only in the role but also in the company, uh, and how that relates to you. Right? What is unique to you? So, for example, whenever I interview the Southwest, um, I, I myself live a lot by the corporate rule: do unto others as you do unto yourself. That's personally a mantra in my life, uh, and the company has that advertised as a mantra in its values. So that was a way to talk about myself, but also attributed to the role and the interview stage, right? Um, and then, Sarah, I'll let you kind of chime in on that one. I'm going to read another one here. Uh, what are your thoughts there? Anything that maybe I missed? Yeah, no, I feel like tell me about yourself, exactly what you said. Tie, tie kind of what the company is excited about. Tie that maybe, if you can, back to a little bit about you so that the recruiter can really see Um that connection there. Another question I see in the chat is related to what do you do when you're not that excited about the role, you just want to get paid? That I feel like is very honest and I, I think can be true. I think when I read that question, I think, you know, you do want to get paid for your job. Obviously, that is so important. I think I would look at the job description and say, what's one thing? Is there anything on this job description that I'm excited about? And if so, um, talk about that. If if it's a customer service opportunity and, and you enjoy talking to people, um, say that that's what you love. Um, it doesn't have to be that you fit with every single thing in the role. If there's even one small thing that you can connect to, that's what I would share about. Right. So a couple other here that I see, and I'm just going to be highlighting some that I feel like maybe are um, the most common. Salary range expectations and questions. Um, so I see the salary expectation question is one that Traditionally, as far as our recruitment process goes, it's asked a lot on the front end on a phone call with the recruiter, right? And so can't speak to every company, of course. Um, you know, sometimes if it's more of a gig type, you know, like a service industry position or something of that nature, maybe all of that's tied with your direct manager, right? Um, and honestly, uh, if it's brought up on the front end, it's actually a good thing. I mean, you may want to know at the very beginning if this makes sense financially for you, right? Um, now, going with that question could be also like, well, does that bring up a possible for negotiation? Is it, re is it better to say something without hearing a range first, right? And I'll tell, I'm here to tell you on the recruitment side, I, I do enjoy hearing what you have to say before I even set a precedent of what the range is, just so kind of I can get a true look at what you have done internally to uh, start finding out what that range is financially. Be. We all got bills, but we all got different bills, right? So you I, I would like to know what does that range to do for you? And then my job as a recruiter is to be honest and saying, can we work that or can't we? Right. But we can go a little bit more, we can go more depth to that, but just kind of a high uh, broad picture. Sarah, is there maybe one more or two more you think that we should address in the chat? I know I saw some in regards to uh, you know nationality, or personal questions like that. I can go with that one if you feel like uh, that one's good. Yep. Yeah. Well, the nationality one. You know, of course, it's always uh, can be thrown off and it will throw me off. Um, there are certain legalities that certain companies have to abide by. Southwest is definitely one that abides by the legalities where you can't ask any of those types of questions uh, that does not bias, you know, age, sex, gender, things of that nature, right? Um, and with that comes a, a nationality uh, to a sense. Um, if I were you, though, honestly, if that was asked to me, um, I would probably answer someone like this. Oh, that's throw me off. I've never had that question in an interview. Um, I'm proud to say I'm Mexican-American, if that's kind of perhaps where you are living. But to be honest, in regards to my work, I feel like uh, I can, you know, besides my ethnicity, I bring a, per, a personal touch of diversity to a team, if that's what it looks to me. Um, so know that right now, especially with uh, with this time uh, of, of our nation, we 
uh, as a diverse background can say that uh, it is something unique to bring to the table and how it's a strength, uh, right? And so um, something, again, to just uh, tip your hat off. With. But don't be afraid to say it's not a question. It's something that throws you off. Uh, I would say that myself. So maybe a couple more we can answer uh, a little bit later just uh, in uh, keeping with the time. So if we can go to the next slide. All right, so we're going to go into overviews a little bit. Um, we're going to uh, really start to uh, deep dive into how do I get, get through this, right? How do I prepare? Um, so prepare, practice, and perform. Uh, the best way to reduce stress and achieve success and maximize your interviewing opportunities uh, is to interview strategically with three steps. Um, so how many of you have left a conversation or an interview and thought, darn, I wish I would have said this or that, or if they asked me this question, I should have added this bit of information. So this is why preparing is really so important. Uh, go into a little bit of a mock interview, even if it's with yourself in the mirror, or if you have somebody that you can throw off and just say, hey, can you give me 15, 20 minutes? I just want you to ask me this question so I can practice it. Um, right, you know, in regards to just good rule of thumb, you wouldn't go into a test uh, without preparing, you wouldn't go into a presentation for a boss without preparing, think of it that way with an interview, especially for a company that you really are looking to get in. The interview time is about 30 to 45 minutes, and it's a chance for you to show that you're the most qualified. Um, the recruiter in the room, believe it or not, is on your side. Uh, they, they truly do want to get the position filled and with the right person. Um, and uh, we'll go into a little bit of that uh, a little bit later. Um, one also good rule of thumb for preparation is an elevator speech. Just for those maybe unfamiliar, an elevator speech is imagine that you get into an elevator with your dream CEO. What would you say knowing you have those short, you know, maybe 30 seconds or a minute to uh, wow them, right? Tip for an elevator pitch is to make it unique to your story. So a little bit of what we said before, um, everybody may come up with uh, something that says, I'm a hard worker, or I'm a fast learner. Um, so bringing examples of those uh, will also show how you're doing. Bringing accomplishments, awards that you may have uh, won uh, with a personal touch. I mean, that, that's a good one, the personal touch, uh, being humble about it. Uh, there's a difference between being cocky and confident, right? And so doing that personal touch can give it a real unique um, you know, uh, way to, for them to remember you that. CEO. Uh, for, for instance, for me, um, you know, with my elevator pitch uh, early on, um, it was a bit about how can I make it unique to me? Uh, I'm first generation American, very proud, uh, you know, uh, son of my uh, father and mother that are immigrated from Mexico. Um, and understanding there's a lot of uh, first generation, um, but understanding also that that's unique to me and telling them how I'm very proud of what I've done because uh, you know, of my hard work and my parents. That could be something that is unique and that the person walks away saying, this person came from these sort of values, that values, I want to know. Right. Um, so if we can go to the next slide here, we're going to talk about prepare. So prepare, um, there are different tools to be able to prepare, uh, but just know that uh, this one is, is kind of a standard one that you can use. Um, it's the STAR method. And us as recruiters, we, we do preach it as well to our internal folks when they want to interview for another position within Southwest. So it's situation, task, action, results. Um, and just kind of uh, reading through here, think about the situations of uh, where and when. That's what they, they want to capture in that, in that S part of it. The task is what did you need to do to get things done, right? Um, the action, you know, what, do you, uh, what did you do? And as far as an action item, and then the results. So that one's a really important one because we also want to see, well, after doing all that and explaining all that, what was the outcome? So only providing a portion of the STAR method to an answer can be the difference, honestly, between you and that other candidate. Uh, for example, maybe, some, maybe both candidates gave me a great situation, a great task that they had to do, an action of how they accomplished it. But then the one person stopped there, whereas the other one said, as a result, I ended up saving the company this much money. But as a result, we ended up getting the highest grade in our presentation, um, you know, for, for uh, what we had uh, to prepare, right? So those are all things that I can now attribute as uh, um, a result, whereas the other one I may not remember as much because I don't remember the other. Um, but take three examples and write out that star method. For instance, maybe a time uh, that you failed. Um, what did you do to learn? 
a time you went above and beyond, and a time you improved the process. So if you take those three, three, uh, three examples and start doing this exercise, you'll have something of a basis uh, where a lot of interview questions can be maybe phrased different, but at the core could perhaps have some of those attributes. So next year, we're gonna go into uh, the practice part. Can we go to the next slide, please? Thank you. And uh, do you ever start a sentence and then forget where you were going along the way? I don't know if there's any uh, you know, office fans here, but Michael Scott in the office does this a lot. So uh, how do you avoid this or what do you do to help this? So practice, 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 practice makes perfect. Um, you know, it also gives you the opportunity to, rev to review your responses from many different angles. And remember, you can always use those buffer statements to take a quick couple seconds and think about your answer. As a recruiter, I like it when somebody tells me, for instance, I sit out and tell them a, a, a tough question to say, hmm, that's a good question. Let me take a quick second to think about it. Okay. And then goes into their thought out answer. Uh, it can give you just a little bit of a uh, opportunity to just kind of uh, get the wheels turning. Uh, but uh, again, practice, 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 that uh, makes perfect. If we go to the next slide for 15. So here we're going to spend a good amount of time. Um, the uh, we're going to go through each one of the bullets and just kind of go a little bit more in depth here. But I, can, I think the perform part is um, going to be the most crucial sometimes. So uh, understand the job description uh, and tailor your response based on preferred skills. So this goes for applying for a job and interviewing. Uh, I'm sorry, it goes for interviewing, but also for applying for a position. Um, so here's a pro tip. Uh, if you copy and paste the job description into a Word document uh, and you hit Control F, when you hit the word, when you look for the word required or requirement, um, and of course highlights where that, uh, where that word shows up. That is your in to really quickly assess, do I meet the qualifications, the basic qualifications for this, right? You can also do that for the word must. Um, and that helps you kind of just get a real true sense of do I need. Now, if you want to go, Further, go ahead and do the same exercise but for the word preference. So the word preference, of course, can set you apart. Maybe there's certain certifications that they're looking for, or a preference of a background that you've done, right? And remember that you do not, if you do not meet the requirements, um, it's likely to disqualify you from the applicant tracking system that us as recruiters have. Um, so it is a, it's a good practice to have and just do that control F function, right? Um, so going on to the next one, next one the recruiter, uh, not the next slide, sorry, on the next bullet point, the recruiter in the room is on your side and they want you to get the job. So I mentioned this earlier, but it is your job to bring in the, it is our job, I'm sorry, to bring in the best candidates for the job posting. So use the fact that you've got an interview as a confidence booster. Um, you are more than likely picked out of a pool of applicants and something in your background is already liked by myself, the recruiter, or the hiring uh, manager. So know that that's, that's to your side, that's to your advantage, and, and take that confidence in with you, um, knowing that this recruiter already picked me. They called me, right? Um, follow up and thank your audience via email or through LinkedIn. Uh, of course, if you don't have LinkedIn, or their LinkedIn, uh, it's fine because we usually get an email about coordinating an interview time and, and whatnot. Um, but a thank you note goes a long way. And you would be surprised how many people don't do it. You know, don't take advantage of it or forget about it. And, uh, and it was meant to happen. But it's a nice, genuine touch. Even if it is something I've seen this happen in our situation where we have what we call a silver medalist. That's a second best uh, for a job and it's really tough to pick one. Um, but that second best, maybe there was multiple second bests. And uh, when we got a nice, genuine note that showed, a bit of their character. And that could set you apart uh, as well if the same position comes open, multiple positions are open for it, or the first person maybe doesn't work out and they want to go to that next step, right? So thanking your audience is a good one. Avoid negative examples. Um, so for examples, uh, what I mean by that is, you know, here's an example. Me and my coworker don't like each other. Well, my tone also made it a little negative, but that, since it's in itself is negative. Um, so that's different from saying, at times I had a difference of opinion with coworkers. Uh, but always follow up 
with how it became a positive or a learning experience. Again, we understand the reality of not everybody gets along, you know, high stress times. I myself came from the service industry uh, during college. So, uh, you know, a lot of that stress time, you know, of course it can be a button up heads, but uh, it's how did you get through that and how did you become a person that learned from it or made something out of that single negative or positive. Right? Um, display a humble confidence. So at South Coast Airlines, we look for people that are hungry, humble, and smart. And so those are really good ways to kind of just um, judge a person's character, uh, pass what's on the resume. And that humble part is a, is a big part of it. Uh, of course, you know, you want somebody that is wanting to always learn, do the best for the company uh, as a smart learner. Uh, but the humble part is what sets them apart as saying how collaborative are you, how approachable are you, uh, are you right? Uh, so that humble confidence is, is something to really try to hone in. Ask clarifying questions. So don't be afraid to do so. And always a good practice to have some questions ready yourself to ask at the end uh, of the interview. For example, one of my favorite questions uh, to ask at the end of when I was interviewed um, was, you know, tell me about what about this company uh, makes me so happy to want to come here. Uh, ending a little bit like that gives the hiring manager as well as maybe the recruiter uh, a chance to explain about their experience. And it's almost a time for them to sell you on the company, sell you on the job. And you want to see uh, that reaction and leave a little bit on a high note, right? You're, you're giving them a remembering of when they were in your seat and how uh, they love the company and perhaps want to bring you in. Right? So that's something that uh, is a good uh, you know, question to bring, but clarifying questions in general are really uh, okay. Um, so recent and relevant experience, that last bullet point, I'm sorry, not the last bullet, but the second to last one. Um, so for example, in college, avoid high school example, right? If you are a working professional, I'm not gonna bring them something from 10 years of their life, right? Uh, the more relevant, the better. You'll learn that with recruiters when they call you, especially when I call a person, I, I appreciate somebody's uh, experience, but I tell them, I'm gonna go and hone in on these past five years because that's probably gonna be the most relatable and the one that I, as a recruiter, can highlight. So when I send my notes to the hiring manager, they see that you could possibly be a plug and play. Right. Um, last one here is actually really important. Your response to not getting a role does matter. So again, going back to that example of how we have silver medalists here in Southeast Airlines, that of course, um, you know, maybe uh, it was a really hard race between one and two. Um, that second one may get something saying, uh, you know, we regret to inform you, but thank you for your time. Uh, typically when it is a, a first in-person interview in our virtual world, the first virtual face-to-face -face interview, we will give a bit more hospitality and give that person a personal call as a recruiter, right? I maybe do any explanations there. But if we notice that the person comes back a little bit, you know, um, I guess disgruntled or saying some negative things about, uh, you know, uh, the interview process that they didn't like or whatever it is, or no, you should have, you should have picked me because of this. Um, that is something we know. I mean, uh, it is something that matters. Um, one, go one further, and I'm going to tell you this from personally seeing this, it also matters how you react after you get the job. Because just because you accepted the job doesn't mean that there isn't a probation period. Most companies have that where a, an offer can be rescinded and brought back because this person perhaps, you know, ended up not being a culture fit for uh, we've seen this. So maybe being too demanding with our coordinators or, you know, calling them names or something of that nature. And, and it's like, whoa, this, this is something that we don't want in our culture. And we value all members of Southwest Airlines, uh, all coworkers, and that's really telling to a person's personality. Um, so I said, there's a lot, of go, a lot to go on in there, but I hope that some of that helped. Uh, if we can go to the next slide here. So this video in interview portion, I'm gonna pass it to Sarah. Perfect, thanks Noel, that was great. I feel like there were so many things that were just good reminders for me as well. 
Just a reminder about the Q&A portion. I'm seeing some questions in the chat, which we love. Feel free to just drop those questions into the Q&A portion. And in the chat, we're actually going to take a little spontaneous poll. So uh, we're about to talk about video interviewing. I'm curious, have you had an interview, a video interview yet? So if you have, say, I've had a video interview. And if you haven't yet, say, not quite yet in the chat. And we'll love to just see if you've had a video interview yet. Uh, next slide. So we're seeing not quite yet, not yet. Um, we've had a few people who have had video interviews, so thanks for sharing. So when you have a video, a video interview and it's your time to have that, here are just a few things to remember. So first, even though it's on video, you still want to dress up. One, it can just be helpful for you to feel confident, um, but two, it, it's just really important that you are showing that professional side, even if you're just in your room. You also want to test your software beforehand. So even if you feel confident in using Zoom, it's always good just to log on in extra time. You know, there's so many different video interviewing tools between Teams and Zoom and Google Hangouts. So make sure you know all the different softwares or the software that you'll be using. You also want to test your mic and your camera angle. So you want to be in a position where it looks like you are at the table with someone. So make sure that the camera isn't above you or isn't below you or to side. You really want it to be that face on conversation. Next, you want to check your internet speed. So some online resources recommend a bandwidth speed of at least one megabits per second. If you, like me, have no idea what that means, don't worry. Uh, if you Google, what is my internet speed? One of the first sites that will come up, you can just click on click on really any site. It'll give you um, an option to test your internet speed and it can tell you do you have fast internet speed or slow internet speed? And from there, you can kind of determine if you might need to find um, a different way to have, the, have that interview. Um, you also want to make sure you have good lighting. So you want the light to be coming toward you, not from behind you, where it makes you like uh, hard to see. Um, and you want to think about your background. So you don't want it to be distracting. You want people to be focused on you and not on anything going on behind you. So during the interview, you want to make sure you're looking at the camera. And even if you have multiple screens, let's say I have two screens here. You want to make sure you know, you're know you not looking at this screen. You're looking at this screen uh, that people see you at. Um, and you want to log on early. So the, the kind of expectation for in-person interviews is that you, know, you show up 15 minutes early. And while I wouldn't recommend logging in 15 minutes early for your video interview, I would recommend still logging on about five-ish minutes early so that you can make sure that everything is good to go. It's still good for you to take notes if you want to during the interview. Um, it, it could make sense to maybe say, hey, I'm going to take notes so they don't think you're looking down at your phone or something like that. Um, you want to make sure your space is free from distractions and you want to mute your cell phone. Uh, so some of those basic things, but just straight things. To keep in mind. So with that, that wraps up interviewing and video interviewing. So if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat. And then with that, we will move on to talking about your resume. So we can keep going to the next slide. So your resumes are your virtual handshake to the recruiter. They're your their introduction, your how they get to meet you. But unfortunately, you've probably heard this before, the average recruiter only spends seven seconds looking at a resume. So with that, it's so crucial that every part of your resume speaks to why you will be great for the job, that the recruiter looks at your resume and thinks, man, I want to move forward with this person. So how do you do that? Well, we'll talk about that. So the main thing are that you want to really pay attention to the keywords that the job description is using. So we'll get more into that in a second. You also want to make sure that your resume is concise. So it should be one page, maybe two pages, but we really recommend that one page length. We also recommend, like Noelle said, making sure it's recent and relevant experience. So probably not a ton more than five years um, in the past. Also, it should be things that you're excited about talking about and that you feel comfortable talking about. So everything that's on your resume, you should be feel good about talking about it during an interview. Lastly, we recommend keeping a running list of experiences and examples that you can pull from. So let's say in a last job or maybe in an organization in college, you focused in your role both on marketing and analytics. 
Well, in a future role, you might be moving into an analytics job. So you're only going to draw from those analytics examples. And because you want every line to make to be important on your resume, you might not have all of the marketing experience on your resume. So having kind of a master bank of that information can be really helpful. Uh, next slide. So as you are taking a look at your resume, what things should you be including? You maybe have heard this before, but it's really good to pay attention to the difference between hard skills and soft skills. So a hard skill is something that's really tangible, it's specific, it's a skill set, it's measurable. So that would be something like you can code SQL, or you've experienced using Tableau, or you've passed your bar exam. Uh, those would be hard skills. And you can list those on your resume. On the flip side of that are soft skills. Soft skills are less tangible, they're harder to quantify, and they're usually personal attributes. So there are things like, I am great at communication or problem solving, but we would recommend that you don't put, I'm good at communication. Instead, we would recommend you give an example of that. So maybe in a past role, you could say, I communicated with 15 different stakeholders in order to bring about this result or I developed a communication strategy to launch this campaign. So instead of listing soft skills, we recommend embedding soft skills into your bullet points um, on your resume. The last thing we wanna talk about for, uh, for um, resume is we really wanna talk about paying good attention to keywords. So if you'll go to the next slides, um, anytime, Noelle mentioned this, and we had some people mention this in the chat as well, um, but we really want to pay attention to the key words that are on a job description. So I would recommend pulling out, printing off the job description, and then highlighting some of those key things. So for example, uh, on this role with looking for a recruiter, it could be that you should screen candidates, know about applicant tracking systems, partner with the hiring manager, or organize a recruiting event. So you want every bullet point on your resume as closely as possible to speak to that. So talk about a time when you have event experience or that you worked with hiring managers or people throughout your company. You want to be really making it clear that you align with those transferable skills into the role that you're looking for. So with that, I'll pass it off to Noelle to talk a little bit about LinkedIn. Thank you, Sarah. I saw one in the chat that I'm, I, I feel like I have to share also in that uh, job description one. Um, it's really good, a good uh, suggestion too, is a word cloud app. I mean, if you copy and paste that and put it in that word cloud uh, application, you can Google a free one and then you can see which words are there most. So thank you for ever suggesting that one. That's a good, uh, good call. So, um, so how does this, all of this stuff translate to LinkedIn it's on the next slide? How does that uh, do that? So in my role, just to kind of give a little bit more uh, you know, context, I am a social recruiter that help find the talent before we even post the job. And a lot of that is done uh, to what we're going to talk here uh, on LinkedIn. If we can go to the next slide. So how, um, how do you, uh, how, let's go back. How do you get the interview? Well, sources proactively identify folks. Uh, to get there. Um, I, I do this, but I don't have a funny hat. So um, it's just uh, for, for show, I guess, the, the title, right? But um, as sourcers and recruiters, uh, they both use LinkedIn. Uh, Southwest here, recruiters do as well, uh, but it's in my day-to-day, uh, -day, right? So um, I, I do that in another application, I'm sorry, other databases like Indeed and others. But how to begin a strong profile. So the next exercise we're gonna do is really more centered around keyword strategy of your summary, but know that this can, this exercise can be done a lot for, as well for you listing your duties or your responsibilities or what you did uh, during the position. Um, and so whenever we see as recruiters, just the title and the company you're at and well, the years on LinkedIn profile, but nothing explaining what they were doing there, it's hard to uh, come to an assumption. Right? So you can do this exercise for that portion as well as the summary. Please go to the next slide. Okay, so we're going to do this based off of three types of profiles. We're going to do one off of like a technology profile, another one off of like a general business profile, and then the last one's going to be more like that creative profile. Um, so let's just uh, get right into it. So technology-focused summary, you know, this is what they have. 
uh, currently studying for a bachelor's degree in mathematics and computer science at University of San Antonio. I'm interested in pursuing a career in software engineering and mobile application development. In my spare time, I like to create new innovative mobile applications and currently have four apps live on the app store. So they're in red. Those are the ones that me as a recruiter, I put, I'm looking for somebody with computer science and or development uh, and or applica uh, application software or mobile. Uh, you can now see how this person will probably get on the, on the top end of my profile matches based off of just a short summary. Uh, and so again, this is something that can be concise. You don't have to go long-winded into a summary, but you can also put in strategic keywords. Um, so if we can go to the next one for general business. So for general business, I, I became, I'm, I came from a business major myself. Um, so here's an example of one that, uh, that could be useful. Uh, so I'm currently a senior at the University of Texas at Dallas, pursuing my bachelor's in business administration with concentrations in sales. Most of my experience consists of customer service through the restaurant industry that allowed me to learn about what makes me unique as an individual and capitalize on it. Skills developed include leadership, organization, and upselling. I'm currently looking for a career opportunity where I can translate my variety of skills into the professional world. Um, so this is very unique to what I came uh, to bring on the table for a company. Um, understanding that those services you might say, well, what can I really develop? Or what can I put on there that uh, shows me unique from uh, others? And it's things like this. I'm looking for somebody maybe with a business background, uh, customer service, and has some sales or leadership, and isn't afraid to say, I'm, I'm willing to uh, get into it, right? So, that's a good general business example. We can go to the next one. So this one right here is the marketing one. Um, so driven digital advertising major at SFA, eager to provide value and deliver uh, on little things to earn the opportunity to work on the big things. Extensive experience designing content, acquiring users, and forecasting engagement with online platforms such as brand ambassadors, influencers, uh, and media interns. Uh, it's self Motivated student of all things digital marketing and passionate pursuer of performance with, with excellence. But here as a recruiter, I may look in for those marketing folks that have some type of design, advertising, digital media, or brand. Uh, this person would pop up. One unique thing here is you see the word designing, and design still popped up. So, you know, understanding that you may uh, gradually put it in a different way, it would still pop up on my end and say, this person is probably a good match for you, right? So, just some good tips and tricks on how you can use keywords to your advantage. Uh, I believe we're going to go to the question parts now and uh, can go back to you, Jessica. Maybe we can answer some of those. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much, Noel and Sarah, for putting this very thoughtful presentation together and for ha it having it be very engaging, of course. I know there was a lot of um, conversations going on in the chat. And while this uh, presentation was um, the whole Hacking a Career series is to provide tips and, and, and current trends and what the workforce currently is going through, especially through the pandemic. Um, we do have other recordings as well available. Um, so I know I see in the chat that there are folks and, and more um, senior roles looking to transition or things like that. We welcome you to watch last year's Hacking a Career Workshop series uh, to answer any questions you have. And uh, we did have a, a the first Hacking a Career session on personal branding yesterday that will be available after the event um, that was more focused on LinkedIn as well. So I know there was a couple questions more closely related to LinkedIn, so just wanted to quickly highlight that on here. But I do want to have the first question be asked from a guest joining us from Facebook Live. Uh, Larry asked, how much info from the job description should match your resume skills? So I'll hand that over to you, Noel and Sarah. Yeah, so how much of it should be um, of your resume to the job description? Um, that's honestly a good, uh, good just tip in general. Uh, when I, for example, when I talk to a person, they usually as a social recruiter is one that wasn't looking. Perhaps they were pretty happy where they're at. I have been to message them on LinkedIn and it was kind of like, oh, well, so this is a company I've always been interested in uh, or the airline industry. I'm going to go ahead and, and accept uh, his call or his message, right? Uh, we may get to a point where it does sound like an attractive opportunity, but they didn't have their resume prepared or don't have it prepared. 
Um, so that's when I take the opportunity to send them that job description and say, really read through it and then tailor anything uh, in there. So for example, Sarah mentioned some of those technical skills. Those are gonna be the first ones that you want to try to make sure that you have on your resume. Uh, of course, understanding uh, that the truth comes out and uh, we're not saying anybody to put fluff uh, and even go further on that, you wanna put as, uh, the level that you are. So anybody could put Excel in a bullet uh, point and say, that's it, right? But if you put Excel advanced level, Excel in intermediate level, um, then that really can show you apart, right? Uh, and then there will be questions that come up in the interview. So I, I see here you say intermediate, are we talking about VLOOKUPs, pivot tables here? Are we going into a SQL uh, type, right? So it, it really does um, give the uh, hiring manager an opportunity to hone in on that. Um, so just kind of some, some tips that I like to see whenever a person I send them the job trip and they come back with the resume that uh, is tailored that we work with. Them. But Sarah, did you have anything to add in that report? Yeah, no, I think that's great. I think at Southwest, we don't use a, like a tool that, you know, filters through your resume to make sure it, it fits. I know some companies have that. We really um, rely on our recruiters. And so there's not like a specific threshold that we have, but I would say that every line on your resume should in some way point to um, who you are and then the way you will align with the role. So don't have anything, if you can, anything on your resume that isn't isn't applicable or, or helpful. You want everything to be really specific, specifically for that job. Perfect. Thank you so much. And then the next question is from Nadia. Is any advice for when you're applying for a job that you may seem overqualified due to previous career, but you're interested because you want to transition to a new role in industry? That's a good question, too, because uh, we get that, too, at Southwest. Um, honestly, when it comes down to it as an applicant, um, we're going to see uh, specifically how much so uh, you're looking to scale back. And what I mean by that is, um, again, going back to the job description, we've had this where we see people that are uh, really just trying to get a foot in the door and, and get with any position at the airline. Um, so I'll look up and up again, this is good for everybody. I'll look at their name and their profile. I'll see this person's applied anywhere from director of ground operations to a ramp agent, right? And knowing that everybody's position is important in Southwest, but I, as a recruiter, am confused. Which level do uh, you want? What is it that you truly want, right? And so if I were you in that situation, I would definitely tailor my resume to at least try to highlight as much as you can what is relatable to that position. And even in your summary, you end up putting something to the notion of, um, you know, I'm, an, I'm a person that we have leadership, vast leadership skills that is looking to come into an individual contributor role and uh, give with the company that I can retire with. Right. Something like that does a couple of things for me, for me as a recruiter. One, it says, wow, this person definitely has a lot of experience and leadership is something always good for this group. Two, but they've self-admittedly said, I'm good with an individual contributor role and that's why I'm applying, right? Um, but then uh, lastly, of course, they say, I'm also here because I want to be here, right? When a person that's just maybe looking for some part-time or something for a couple of years will understand as a recruiter and as a hiring manager, we don't want to do that because that means that I'm obviously filling the position again in a year, or the hiring manager says, I'm going to invest all this time in training a person, which honestly, to train, truly, truly train a person, especially on the higher level roles or mid level roles, it takes about six months, right, at minimum, uh, just for them to leave my, my department. In the right? So these are all just things to be uh, conscious about. Sarah, did I miss anything there? No, that was great. Thanks, Noel. Awesome. Perfect. And so the next question is, is it professional to have a Zoom background at all during an interview or is no background best? I'll defer to Sarah on that one. I don't know. I had an interview recently and I had a Zoom background and I got the job. So <laughs> I don't think I don't I don't think there's necessarily a right or wrong to that. Honestly, I think it might depend on your situation and what's in your background. So if you don't have a way to have a clear background behind you, I think a Zoom background is, is really appropriate as long as it's like a, a neutral colored background, maybe not like a, a crazy picture or something like that as your background. I was right. just going to clarify on that. I know there's a lot of options we have on Zoom and on Teams as well. So uh, I was going to ask to uh, specify a little bit more in terms of should it be an office background or should it be those graphics where you're at the beach or have 
a colorful background, but thank you so much for, for being specific, Sarah. And the next question we do have from Larry from joining us on Zoom is how do we approach special accommodations and equity practices at the company or, sh that sh or should that be a later co uh, conversation for later? That's a good question. And in regards to equity or uh, special accommodations, um, a lot of that, as far as our process I can speak to, is that done on the front end. Um, so what I mean there is that recruiter call before you get face to face with the person is almost just as important as the actual interview itself, because it levels it, right? It's your chance to kind of voice a bit of those, uh, you know, maybe accommodations that you like or concerns. Um, you know, for example, one big one right now is how remote is this job? Now we've transitioned as a society to be more virtual and made it more friendly to be virtual. And so that's a big question that we as recruiters have to be ready, ready and prepared to accommodate for. If it's a position that requires a lot of face-to-face, -face, you know, for example, with our technical operations team uh, that are mechanics and anybody that is twisting a wrench over there, well, guess what? I mean, that human interaction needs to be done because you have to be physically there to see the plane, right? Uh, but if it's one that's maybe more of a coder uh, within technology, we've morphed now to have that more of a, uh, or a possibility for the remote, right? But that's an accommodation that the recruiter can really start addressing on the front end, um, as well as equity. I know that when it is equity, we bring, I bring some people from over from other companies. It's losing out on all this, uh, all this uh, PTO that I'm recruiting. I've been there for X amount of years, 10 plus years, right? What can we do to help uh, bridge that gap? You know, and then it's up to me as a recruiter to really truly show that that is a, a big uh, you know ask or not ask but uh, one on your end right because it may make sense that uh, it comes on the negotiation on the back end side of things for salary right you know can we do our best to try to compensate somewhat for for that lost time but understanding on your end as a recruiter I didn't mention that the uh, preparation is for you to accept you know everybody starts the same on a PTO for us as far as our policy. For accruing it over time. So, uh, Sarah, did I miss anything there? Or yeah, the only thing I think is that, you know, we're super passionate uh, about making sure that anyone who needs an accommodation has an accommodation and that it doesn't um, negatively impact you in any way throughout the recruiting process. So for Southwest on our career site, if you need an accommodation, even before you start the application, you can email our team and it doesn't go to our recruiters. It goes to a specific accommodations team that's kind of set kept separate so that it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't um, affect anything in the process. And then Every step in the process, you'll be reminded, do you need an accommodation? Let us know. And our accommodations team is always willing um, to help you to make sure that you have just the best experience possible um, throughout the process. That's very helpful. Thank you so much, Noel and Sarah. And uh, we do have one more question in the, in the Q&A window. So if anyone else has any other questions, please submit them in the Q&A window. So the next one we have from media is as well is, if we're interested in transitioning from one industry to another, similar question to the one we had previous, but this one is related to LinkedIn is, should we list all of our skills for both industries? Um, so, um... That's honestly something as a recruiter I like to see. I mean, from both industries. And what I mean by that is um, just because perhaps somebody started, um, for example, my brother uh, as an accountant, um, but now he's transitioning to a more of a business analyst in a technology role, um, it, it, it doesn't mean that he shouldn't put what he's learned from his accounting side, his finance side. Uh, case in point, um, you know, they, whenever um, he was in, on the job market, um, somebody came out to him and asked if he was interested in a job because he had that uh, finance background. They were looking for a, some, uh, somewhat of a hybrid, somebody with a technology background, but also has a basis of uh, finance uh, understanding, right? So if he would have just disregarded that and said, I only want to advertise my technology experience because I want a technology boost, well, guess what? He wouldn't have been grabbed by that sorcerer, that recruiter and said, you are a perfect fit because of this, right? So it's something as a, as a, as a recruiter and a sorcerer I like to see. Um, and again, it's not to say that you can't put stuff that's past five years on your LinkedIn or your resume. It's to say that uh, when we focus on the position at hand, it's usually the most recent. Um, there are still uh, a lot of good things from the past that we can bring up to highlight why you're even that much better. Right? So um, as well as uh, the fact that it brings maybe a more diverse look into the 
position because you have a different background and you can learn from it. You can bring that to the team. Sarah, did you have anything to add there? No, I don't think so. Thank you. Wonderful. Um, and so that was the last question that we have here in the Q&A window. Uh, so I want to thank Noel and Sarah for joining us today and, and just answering all the questions and again, having it be so engaging as it is. Uh, we do have a recording of today's session that will be available to you all after. We will be providing the link to the recording so that you can rewatch and take uh, more diligent notes on everything that was shared. We will also be providing the recording for yesterday's session. And uh, just a kindly reminder that we do have our final session tomorrow on virtual job board, and we will be having Southwest Airlines, Noel and Sarah joining us as well, along with other Fortune 500 companies sharing current opportunities at their, at their companies and kind of going over what the ideal candidate looks like and important deadlines to keep in mind. We did share over a link where you can all send over your resumes if you want to be considered for any of the opportunities available. So please make sure to send that over. We will be including that in the post of an email as well that you'll be receiving. So please make sure to send your, your resume and join us tomorrow as you do not want to miss out. Thank yes. you all and have a great rest of your day. Jessica, and just to echo that, yes, uh, good tease on there. Uh, we are very excited to tell you about internships, entry levels, what we got going on, and how you can uh, be in our scope of things so we can message you about those roles. Um, and when you work with me, you fly for free. So we're very excited to uh, be part of that tomorrow. Thank you so much. Beautiful perks. Sign me up. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, everyone. See you all tomorrow. Have a great rest of your day.